Hey guys, Bada Bing here, thanks for tuning in. Continuing the Gas Blowback Rifle vs series, I present to you the Tokyo Maruri M4 MWS vs the Umarex licensed VFC HK416A5. Two very different gas rifles, but there can be only one. Let's talk about it. The Maruri M4 MWS was released in late 2015 and is Tokyo Maruri's first production gas blowback rifle. It's completely their own design gas system and fires from their proprietary 35 round magazines. To date, they have made a few models ranging from their traditional M4 carbine with plastic handguards and carry handle to the CQBR and the standard SOPMOD MWS you see here. The VFC HK416A5 is one of the most recent releases by this company and is an expansion upon the Western Arms M4 gas system. Their AR gas blowback system is one of their more popular and most developed of VFC's gas blowback inventory. It fires from the 35 round magazines which are available in the 416 type, OG Stanag and PMAG styles. We begin the comparison by looking at the rifle features. Right off the bat, the TM rifle is in the traditional Colt M4 build. Done to death? Yeah, but classics never die. We're back to the early 2000s with this Sopmod carbine, with the 14.5 inch outer barrel, Knight's wrist rail, Knight's style for the rear iron sight, and LE stock. The crown jewel of the external features has to be the factory Cerakote finish. More on that later. The hop up adjustment wheel can be found inside the upper receiver in perhaps one of the most awkward locations. Turning the wheel towards the rear will increase the hop up setting. Calibration is positive and it adjusts in clicky increments like your zeroing a scope. The VFC HK416 is a lefty's dream, A5 variant having the full ambidextrous controls. It features their patented hop up system disguised as the adjustable gas block. Further features include the integrated front flip-up iron sight bolt onto the quad rail, M4 angled mag well, enlarged trigger guard, version 7 HK grip, enhanced charging handle, HK low profile rear backup iron sight, and the rear sling point with the HK slimline stock. Now let's move on to the build quality. The TMM4 construction is quite solid, however there is a slight play between the upper and lower, but to be honest it's not something you'll notice, it still feels good. On the HK416, the entire construction is rock solid, apart from the outer barrel, which is the number one thing that lets the build quality down. Because the lockup on the upper and lower is so rigid, the rear takedown pin requires tapping out. After owning the rifle for 6 months or so, it began to slowly loosen up. The functionality of the M4 is fantastic. Every control component has definitive actions. Seating the magazine, sweeping the selector, dust cover, takedown pins, smooth charging action and that reassuringly positive bolt release. The user interface cannot get any better. And while the inclusion of a working forward assist has no practical use, I love the fact that they just made it a thing on this rifle. The HK416's functions are also good. The selector switch sweeps with minimal effort, but it locks into every mode. Charging the rifle and you'll notice a heavier pull than the Maruri M4 thanks to the stiffer spring. The surface coating of the bolt carrier produces a smooth sensation as the action is worked, but the charging handle itself is quite flimsy and a bit of a disappointment. The dust cover also refused to close on my rifle, so that's another disappointment. Looking at the finish of these rifles, and they are both gorgeous. The Cerakote finish that the TM M4 has is among the highest quality and is very durable, with a rough but non-abrasive texture. I've yet to actually put a scar on it. Even the optics rail has a good resistance to constant abuse from mounting various sights. Completing the traditional look, it's finished with the Colt M4 trademarks, which look good. The HK416 looks great. Unfortunately, the surface coating is thin. Very thin. When I attached my hollow sum for the very first time, that was enough to leave a footprint. Still, the surface texture of the paint feels nice. It's still cheap, and easily susceptible to wear though. As this is a Umarex licensed HK416, it features the accurate HK traits. They're very tastefully replicated and are sharp to the eye. Delving into the guts of these rifles, we find the internals are completely different. The M4 MWS has TM's own type gas system, instead of choosing a more realistic approach like VFC. They come from two very different mindsets. 
the MW S has a very unrealistic lower fire control parts, a plastic buffer, and a very odd looking bolt carrier and charging handle. In the shadow of the VFC, it cannot possibly look more toy like. However, don't let those unconventional looks deceive you. In fact, the system has proven to be quite durable. On the bolt carrier, there is a hook underneath that locks onto the bolt lock plate upon an empty magazine. The bolt catch itself is its own individual piece that does not make contact with the bolt carrier, allowing a rigid locking plate to snatch the bolt carrier. If you're not well versed in TM's design, then this method would probably look mad in your eyes, but to give them their due, this mechanism never fails. There are signs all over the internals which are geared towards reliable smooth action. The hammer has its own roller bearing, as does the bolt carrier. They've also incorporated a couple of other provisions to reduce shock. The nozzle has a retractable bolt lugs and a shock absorbing gas key. The lightweight plastic buffer playing a part too with its springy tail, and all this adds to the shooting experience, which is to say it's snappy. The HK416 is a product of many years of trial and error by VFC. Evolved from the Western Arms M4 design, they feature mostly steel internals and have proven durability. The bolt carrier is made of an alloy with the usual steel reinforcements for the bolt lock. Its nozzle has FPS adjustability via an allen key inserted through the front. I'm not too confident with the striker assembly. The small latch and valve striker all have tiny springs which can be a nightmare to install. I loathe taking it apart as those springs are just infuriating. The hop-up system recently introduced by VFC is very handy. Turning the adjustable gas block will set your hop, but the internal adjustment axle is made of plastic and if one were to exert too much pressure, the part will break. Speaking from experience there. There's also small burrs on this plastic piece, which sometimes makes it very reluctant to calibrate. On the original European release, the hop-up chamber featured a small pin protruding from one side of the chamber casting that the hop-up lever would sit on. This piece was prone to breaking, and is something that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Thankfully, they've rectified this by having a removable steel pin, but this is something so simple to get right during its initial development that it's complete stupidity to have greenlit its release as it was. All A5s coming out now should have the latest hop-up, but if you're in the EU and have bought one of these rifles, open her up and see which chamber you have. If you do have the older chamber version, contact VFC support and ask for the latest version, and tell them you want it for free. The TMM4 at the time of making only has the 35 round Stanag magazine available. With the upcoming release of TM's MTR GBBR, there will be a classic 20 round magazine. The design of the magazine incorporates a siphon tube attached to the fill valve, and this regulates the amount of gas inside the tank. This has a negative effect on the gas capacity, and users, including myself, have opted to remove these tubes to gain more room within the tank. Originally, it takes on 6 to 8 seconds before it's full, and post removal, it jumps up to over 25 seconds. But that's a little overkill, and increases the chance of getting liquid gas into your nozzle. With the tube removed, it increases the total round count, and I for one feel much better knowing that even if I flip the rifle to fully auto and let loose, it's going to continue shooting until the bolt locks back. I usually fill anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds. The HK416 magazines are the second generation, and have a larger gas capacity than the previous versions. For a gas blowback mag, they're quite light too. So, both magazines are stated to be gas efficient, how far will they go on one charge of propane? For a 10 second fill, the Marui M4 fired just 58 shots, whereas the HK416 fired a remarkable 182 before the gas tank was empty. Now this results left me scratching my head, as when I first conducted the green gas mod for the Maruri M4, I was reaching well over 100 shots per gas fill. No matter which magazine I tried, I continued to come up short. To get anywhere near the same shot count as the HK416, I had to charge 25 seconds worth of gas into the magazine, and even then, it only had 158 shots to give. I know, only. This is probably down to the fill valve slowly trickling in the liquid gas. Recoil. Something which is very one-sided in this comparison. 
I say that because the A5 has a big old heavyweight buffer and produces one of the heaviest recoils you'll find on a toy gun. The buffer spring on the HK416 is slightly stiffer too, so that helps sharpen up the action, even with that heavy buffer. The rifle firing is very metallic and loud. Coming back to the M4, it has a lighter plastic buffer, but with that you receive super fast reciprocation. It runs like it's addicted to being shot, and the trigger's responsiveness allows you to give it what it wants. The M4 produces a crisp tap in the shoulder, and the HK416 gives you more of a violent shove. If recoil is your thing, you'll dig the 416. The triggers are vastly different in comparison with one another. As the M4 has the design that it has, with its fire controls, it doesn't give you the same beefy analog feel that the HK416 will. The travel pulls back into a kind of recess, where it has a definitive stop. It then ticks over the brake like it came out of nowhere. What's weird still is that the reset only arrives after the trigger has reached the full extent of its return journey. It's very weird, and not particularly very good. Then we have the performance of the HK416 trigger. It's great. Contrasting with its competitor, it feels like a real AR trigger, or what I perceive a real AR trigger to be. It has a short and heavier pull to a clear sharp wall, with the resets that suck your finger back out with a clunk under the heavier spring tension. The operation feels clean, well made, and you feel the seriousness in its delivery. It's an exceptional action that makes the Marui M4 feel so much like a toy. The accuracy between these two are strangely close. I set the stage as usual, with the target at 20 meters away, using RWA Airsoft Surgeon 3s, and aiming at a single point. The Maruri M4 first shot this group. All BBs hit the paper without a single round veering off course, even though I was getting an annoying crosswind. The second round revealed this grouping here, again with a frustrating breeze, but the BBs were all landing closer together. The last groupings I did looked tidier with a few BBs hitting off to the right side of the paper. Without the environmental effects being a factor, a truer image of what the MWS will achieve completely stock can be seen. The HK416's first set of holes landed in a neat formation, with only a few finding their way off the paper high and wide right. A few weeks later I sat down to record another accuracy test with the A5, and as I mentioned earlier, the hop-up chamber broke, so the sheet I recorded here had no consistent results. I patched up the chamber, and I was able to shoot this final score. So with these tests completed, this is how the best results look side by side. The 416 achieved an impressive stock grouping, and I would be completely happy to take this to a game. Landing these hits within the size of a human head at 20 meters is good enough for me. The Marui M4 managed to shoot just a smidge better, which is no surprise. The most impressive result I shot last year with this beauty of a grouping. That's some AEG consistency right there. Yep, the Marui wins this round, but I think it's important to note that the competition is beginning to get to that level. I shot most of the footage you see in this video during the winter, when we can really see what these rifles can do. I use propane in both rifles to ensure a fair test. Okay. Just blowing off the snow on a Tokyo Marie M4 MWS magazine. Freezing. And we've got a slight, you probably can hear it over the microphone, um, got a nice Siberian wind that's bathing me in all its chilly goodness. Um, so, um, just gonna try shooting the uh, TMN4 
Um, we've all seen it run on semi-automatic before, uh, especially in the cold. But um, what I'm going to do now is try a freezing cold magazine, just trying to see how well the fully automatic works. Uh, so let's do that, because it's fun. my jacket here um, I thought it was I thought it was gonna stop um, so I, I stopped halfway through to think hang on is, is it really really finished but then carried on again and emptied the magazine on fully auto okay. and here we got a nice warm Tokyo Marie M4 magazine just to show you what the benefits are of keeping that magazine against your body heat when it's temperatures like this Beautiful. The Marui M4 has a decent cold weather resistance. While no green gas gun will be totally immune to the cold weather, the M4 still does a good job in those conditions. I found that the rifle requires a longer gas charge time to get it through the BBs. Some fully auto mag dumps were falling short of the total capacity. It's to be expected when it's as cold as you see it here. I could have used some stronger gas like Garda Man, Black, really but I don't want today. to push the platform farther beyond its 134A parameters, despite it being freezing. A little cold weather tryouts with the VFC HK416A5. It's a little sluggish, but it still works. Yeah. As much as this can be expected. Um, let's go full auto because why not? Um, let's see how well the system copes with it. Not very well. That's probably going to croak any second, so we'll just see what we can do on semi auto. Okay, now we're empty. And now a magazine that has been inside the pouch for a while, so this should be a little bit warmer. Actually, yes, it is warm. Let's go uh, straight into fully auto, just because. And it works. But, you know, being a warm mag, it would generally do that. Cold? Nah. No chance. Okay. Then we got this. It's going to be useless because VFC gas burbic rifles and stuff, <laughs> they're not known for their <laughs> amazing cold weather performance, but um, this is their 416 magazine. Uh, it's just been buried in snow. And it is absolutely freezing. Um, I'm just going to see how well it works. No, not well. Not well. This is just with regular propane, so it's, it's not anything sort of powerful or anything that they get it through the cold. Woo! Even my gloves, this thing's freezing. It's not picking up the BBs whatsoever. A 
but between this and a TM M4NWS this one loses big time Oh my hands are cold The HK416 suffered a lot more it has a tougher job trying to push that stiff spring and heavyweight buffer. It just couldn't handle it. Keeping the magazines warm was the only way to get it through the cold. The Maruri M4 is better in the cold, simple as that. The 416 could be improved with a stronger gas and or using a lightweight buffer and spring, but as is, it's a summer gun. Fully automatic. The mark of a good GBBR is whether it can fire all of its BBs with a single pull of the trigger. Can they do it? The ace up the M4 sleeve is its speed. It has it. The plastic buffer with its springy button on the tail catapults the bolt carrier back forward, completing each cycle with swift precision. So when the fun switch is activated, it smokes off the 35 round like it's a five-year-old high on sugar and abruptly stops as the bolt lock catches the rapid action. The HK416 has a steady rate of fire, and it can comfortably clear the magazine no sweat, depending on the temperature. As I said earlier, it doesn't like the cold, but as long as it's mild, it should burn off the magazine on one squeeze without slowing down towards the end. Now we've gone over the individual rifles, which one is the better choice? Well, this comes back to the two different mindsets I spoke of earlier. One rifle is made from the ground up to be functional, reliable, and durable right from day one. The other tries hard at being a good replica, and overcoming its flaws by throwing in steel and other improvements over time, learning from previous mistakes. They both get where they need to go, but they take very different avenues to get there. The Maruri M4 has become very popular, and attracting players all over the globe. It's easy to use, and skirmish ready right out of the box. It's a platform that you don't need to do anything to after you buy it. Just set the hop up and go. The feel of the rifle is solid and has a remarkable handling and general operation. The Colt trademarks are cool, well defined, and because it's got that Cerakote finish, it will continue to look great for years. The best of what the Maruri M4 has to offer you is it's easy to use, excellent build, tactile and functional controls, reliable bolt lock thanks to the Z system, high performance, smooth action, Great accuracy, good resistance to the cold, lots of aftermarket support, and a factory standard Cerakote finish. All these attributes result in a platform that makes it a skirmish powerhouse. It's a toy gun made for airsofting, to go up against players using electric guns and other high speed systems. Realism and heavy recoil taking a back seat, because when you've got people shooting back at you, realism and recoil isn't going to do anything for you. The disadvantages to the system are its awkward rail replacement, requiring an adapter ring to allow different handguard options. The trigger action isn't amazing, the internals aren't realistic, and it's recommended to be used on low powered gas as it's really made for the Japanese market. While I have used this rifle on green gas slash propane since day one, way back at the end of 2015, it is important to keep in mind the use of such gas is entirely at the owner's risk. Myself. I cannot downgrade to 144A gas when it fires like a monster on propane. The only thing I've had break was the nozzle return spring, and that was the result of the action being too fast for the original part to take. It was the cheapest and easiest fix ever with an upgraded nozzle spring set, and the rifle continues to blaze away to this day. That is perhaps the only thing to keep in mind. Tokyo and Marui have spent a lot of time getting their first GBBR just right before releasing it to the world. Just when they were on the verge of releasing it, they had second thoughts and postponed its scheduled release until they completely fixed the bolt lock issues. This led to the birth of their Z system. What was supposed to be a 2014 release became winter 2015. But you know what? It was worth the wait. The VFC HK416A5 is a well-built rifle, and those HK trades are gorgeous. 
the shooting performance is enjoyable with that crisp trigger and wonderful recoil. It has fantastic features that suit both left and right handed shooters. The user friendly design is further enhanced with this genius hop up adjustment system and I've really enjoyed my time with the rifle. The basic shooting mechanics have been totally reliable, every shot sending a jolt through my shoulder. The finicky looking lower fire controls didn't let me down, which is good because they really don't look reassuring to me. Just as the M4, this has a lovely balance, it's lightweight and really manoeuvrable. It has great build quality, it's fully ambidextrous, it has mostly steel internals, clever adjustable hop-up system, nozzle FPS adjustment, heavy but also snappy recoil, excellent trigger, and not only is it available in black, but also vomit. Yuck. The bad news is that the finish isn't durable at all. Mounting an optic for the very first time is all it needed to scrub off the paint. The magazines are very expensive, sometimes up to £20 sterling more than the Maruri M4 magazine. Aftermarket parts and upgrades are limited, spare parts are a nightmare to obtain, having to email VFC support every time. Retailers don't seem to carry much, if any, VFC spares, so you're left completely at the mercy of the company, and sometimes it takes a while to receive any correspondence. And the really bad news is that on my rifle, and the majority of the rifles that were initially released to the European Union, they had bolt lock issues. Sometimes having intermittent failures, and some, mine included, didn't work at all. Not only that, it's had some serious barrel wobble. It's ridiculous to have these small problems on a rifle which retails from £450 to over £500. The final straw was when the hop-up chamber broke. That was such an easy thing to get right, but they still thought best to go ahead with an inferior unit, and when they got around to improving it, they can just charge people for their mistake when it eventually went kaput. So after the European market performed their quality control inspections, VFC got to work to rectify these issues for the Asian slash worldwide release. As far as I'm aware, the problems have been ironed out, and if you decide to purchase an A5 now, you stand a good chance of getting an up-to-date model. This doesn't really do much for the folks that already paid good money for a rifle which wasn't finished to begin with, but at least it's been taken care of now. Having said that, this could all have been avoided had they actually taken the time to make sure it was completed before releasing it. You know, like other companies do. I've made a video showing the steps I took to solve the bolt lock problems, which you can find within the description, and I was lucky to receive a custom barrel stabiliser from a friend, which locks the outer barrel in place, thus eliminating the wobble. Some things on the A5, they got right. The look, the features, shootability. It's just the avoidable mistakes and the attitude that VFC has towards its customers that have let it down. With the help of Stefan and others from the A5 community, my HK416 was finished, and I sold it. The rifle is more of a replica than a gaming gun, which is about right, as its new owner is more of a collector anyway. The Tokyo Marui M4 MWS wins, for me anyway. Hardly surprising I know, but this rifle has never given me so much as a headache. A minor hiccup perhaps when the nozzle spring snapped, but other than that, nothing. It's a GBBR I don't have to worry about. Don't just take my word for it, there's plenty of other players out there rocking TM's MWS platform that can speak for its ability for performance. It's a skirmisher's rifle, feed it gas and BBs, and it'll do the rest. Which rifle would you choose? Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching the video my friends, hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like and why not subscribe and be notified when my next video goes live. You can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash badabingpictures and Instagram at badabingpictures. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Catch you in a bit.